Welcome back guys to part two of our four part episode where we are on the road traveling um, through Severbeck Spoort on our way to Ons, uh, uh, it's pl the place is called Ons uh, Karoo Plaas uh, where we are on the road with Koki Matika that's road all the way from Gauteng to be with us one of our subscribers and um, I'm about just to play a few of these voice recorded messages that we chatted about the previous night at my place when we were just having a barbecue and uh, and get to know each other um, conversations and um, yeah uh, while, while, while you hear the interesting conversations we had and his background and wh where he comes from and even some motorbike tips from him um, can just watch this beautiful road, Sivabek's Port. Um, it's just a fantastic scenic route for uh, for bikers. When Monica asked me uh, how did I get into maths, Ma, let, let me just give you a brief summary of my career. So my career started after matriculating at Belleville High School down in Belleville. I went to Stellenbosch study. And I actually became a teacher back at Belleville High School. M my headmaster was my boss during the time I was teaching there. Okay, so I went back to the school for Meneer Kellerman, my wibas, and two down now my wib as on the From there I went for a brief stint to the University of Stellenbosch to lecture, then for a brief stint down to what those days it was a, a, a designated coloured university, University of the Western Cape, down in Morredamberg, Belleville. Those were the days where they threw the stones in Morredamberg, the hectic student protest. Mm, I remember, I actually remember that. Yes. I used to stay there in, in Brockenfell. Yeah. Okay, okay. And um, then I got an appointment at UNISA. And that's how I ended up in the old Transvaal. I then um, joined the former city council of Victoria. But all along on uh, um, mathematics and the researching of mathematics war remained an interest. Okay, so I've never stopped that. And so I'm now um, back and I'm as a retiree. I do a lot of research. I'm a, what they call a visiting faculty or visiting professor in mathematics. At Christ University in Bangalore. I work with masters and PhDs only and do research and publish. You, you can see my work on, on, on Google. I could even some of the most recent stuff. Mm. Um, yeah. And I do motorbiking and I do trembe drumming and I'm married. So that is uh, in short. What's what drumming? Trembe. Trembe drumming. Africa drumming. No, okay. Africa, okay. A lot of Africa drumming. That's interesting. No, 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 no what is this one? Thing? Um, like, let's say, okay, so you say you're diabetic, not too serious, but... Uh, but what they call type 2. Type 2 diabetic. So, so that, that's a lifestyle, a that's a lifestyle uh, a form of diabetes mm -hmm. that's developed, you know. Mm -hmm. Different things, too much drinking, too much stress, perhaps, mm. all kinds of stuff. Mm. It's not the genetic one where you diabetic or uh, diabetes mm. type 1 and you have to inject yourself with insulin or something. Mm. Like Do you don't drink? No, so mm. I stopped sugar. Yeah, that's why I'm on coke. You zero. don't drink because of the sugar? Yes. No, oh. yeah, so I cut out sugars as much as possible. Okay. Occasionally I'm naughty and I'll have a little chocolate or a little this. Yeah, but I don't indulge in sugar okay. as part of my regime to control my sugar. Okay, and then another thing that I found very interesting that your bike's got all these names. This one that you hear with today is called Rasta. Hmm. Do you have any Rastafarian? Uh, uh, look, I, uh, I, I, I love music. reggae music. I, yeah. You but don't um, smoke joints, anything like occasionally. that? Occasionally. Occasionally, yeah. yeah. We're yeah. actually saying to yourself, we're still <laughs> selling and, joints and from and yesterday, mm. uh, the the shop. And, and, and it's not legal to sell. Yeah. And, and perhaps at some stage, many years ago, we would say, as Rocky Bourne, as Rocky Bourne, as Rocky Look, we, in the military days, we were, uh, we looked off that stuff, so. 
but but why I'm asking is because of the bike's name Rasta and the other bike other three okay. bikes now? Yeah, no. So um Rasta the uh, um Honda soft top bag I got with the bike. Mm -hmm. Had straps all over the place, so it reminded me of dreadlocks. Okay. okay. And another side of this mm -hmm. is now Rasta. Okay. okay. And then I have my WR450F, which is like a very powerful little enduro bike. Uh, almost too powerful for its size and weight and stuff. And um, that one I call Popeye. Because Popeye was the sailor man, he just had to down a, a turn of spinach and yeah. it was ultimately powerful. Um, and then Pork is the DR650. Yeah. Uh, that makes, that it makes, makes sense, sense to me. The Australian yeah. called them bush pigs. You yeah, know, yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's a pig. It's a, this, a, the the mm. Honda XR650L mm. is also called like a pig of God. Mm. So that's Porky. Mm. Yeah, it's like uh, people uh, give names to their vehicles mm. and their this and their that. Well, you do the same. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So no, it was just a rust and the African twin. I couldn't figure out, the, but you've explained that. But, but but super um mm, uh, super awesome. You're the first guy we've ever had that we've ever had here. Yeah? You're also the first guy that me and Monica has, will ever ride have ridden with. We've never ridden in a group mm. um, one. because Monica's group shy. Trace Bong she she she's always only fallen on a bike, right? When there's more than one person watching. Yeah. As soon as he sees someone, if it's in a parking lot, if it's someone that just walked over the road and looks at her, she falls. Yeah. She gets totally... That might be a little drop rather than a fall. Once she's in motion, it, it's fine. Yeah, but, but, but she, gets, she gets nervous when she's, she's, she's being, she feels like the eyes are on her, then yeah. she, she, she gets worried. And, but she's, she's a good rider. To me, she's a good rider. Yeah. She just... I always try to forget about no. people. What I generally see are uh, your both good, good riders. But what she must accept, you will pull the eyes. Remember, it's, it's fascinating for a lot of people to see bikers, first of all. To see lady bikers is more fascinating. And then, as we become more matured in age, in general, it becomes more fascinating to certain people. Mm -hmm. You know, so, I mean, oh, I know that's of youngsters true. that will remark uh, to me, and you would overhear it, the one will tell the other, yes, what, check out Tupi. Are you, are, they don't expect the Tupi to, mm -hmm. to even be on the bloody bike, mm -hmm. let alone whether he can ride it or mm -hmm. not. That's not really the issue. So you must just mentally get over it. You will occasionally attract um, especially um, like where we were today at that little restaurant mm. that coffee shop we had a lot of people coming a up a lot of people mm. come and they chat and they actually look and now I but I must say the way the way, <laughs> the way you were looking looked like you came from Africa <laughs> so, <laughs> so you come along now it's when the three bikers come in they don't necessarily spot the gender immediately because everybody has more or less the same kind of clothing on and a helmet and gloves. Mm -hmm. So now we stop. Mm -hmm. Now we start taking all this stuff off. And the one says, Kijk wat daar is het vrouw. Wow. Mm -hmm. And now we walk in and when we go out, they don't, they don't look at us. Kijk wat daar is het vrouw. Because it's... Uh, but at that restaurant today, everyone's just like giving us peace signs and like, <laughs> like we're going to Egypt or something. Even when you're pulling out, the people are standing mm -hmm. on top of their car. Right. Oh, no, so you, before so that African twin went down, they didn't even make a scene. But then yeah. we going out because your bike's so fucking dirty. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they could see it. It had some mileage on it. it it's come from from somewhere other than uh, 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 Gerard this morning. <laughs> so Monica, you must just overcome that and actually let's say enjoy it. So yeah, calm yeah, yourself, my okay. Yeah, enjoy it. yeah. Mm -hmm. She she always tells me she wish she had started ten years before this. Yeah, mm, I totally agree no, with that. I started too late in my life. Mm. Okay, then my, one of my last questions, but it's not going to be the last one. Uh, <laughs> uh, what would you use? Do you now do super long distance compared to what we've done? I mean, you so, we do drive a lot, yeah, but you driving all the way from Kauteng to, or, uh, like today, um, two or three different provinces, because I think you touch yeah. the Eastern Cape, you touch the Free State. 
Yes. Now you're in the Western Cape, right? So, yeah. so it's a three. Let's say three provinces. Different weather conditions, different cli- different climates, different people. It's a, it's a long distance to travel on an African twin. I think it's a long distance. Yeah. Uh, and because, I mean, you're talking about at least 1,000 plus just to yearn in 1,000 plus back to that side. Or I'm going to do much more because I, I also zigzag all over the place. Like mm-hmm. Monday, I'll first, first go to Longabond, then back to the peninsula, then up to the past mm-hmm. Longabond, but the north side, and thereafter I'll go through the northern Cape, mm-hmm. uh, which also takes me through northwest. Yeah, and the bottom tip of Limpopo are almost covering. I, I, I'm excluding KwaZulu Natal on this round. So you're talking about six? Yeah, really? oh. six. but I'm in a month ago we were down uh, to KwaZulu Natal mm. because my my wife walked Pondoland. Mm. She did the wild walk in the, in the old Pondoland, which is part of the wild coast, which is now part of obviously the Eastern Cape, the former Transkei. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then, obviously, I, I still hope, maybe still this year, I'll do a trip um, heating through Botswana up into Namibia. Mm. And just to refresh everyone, if we, I'm going to put this on video, Koki is 68. Yeah. yeah. I wish I could be... Well, like she like told me earlier, and I couldn't believe it when you told me. Continue. I wish I could be that. Close to 60, but not, mm-hmm. uh, not over 60. No, it's quite... Um, mm. oh. Slung, slung venom. <laughs> um, no, because uh, for me it's remarkable, and, and, and not only that, your skill level, you said you must go heading to Cape Town to spend a, a day or two with um, someone that's done a GS course, so it's in the GS team, mm. right? for, the, for the thing. So you, you're sharpening up on your skills, but at current level, what would you reckon your skills? Are you, do you regard doing willies on an African twin as a skill? Or do you, or mm-hmm. what do you regard as skill? No, no, a wheelie on African twin is not necessarily a skill because you don't take it into hard in the area where you really have to lock your front wheel over major obstacles. Okay, yeah. no, a nice, uh, I think you are skilled when you ride and you do whatever you do once. Uh, by way of example, you're coming down a straight, you're at speed, and you see a bend coming. So, you want to uh, roll down on your throttle at some stage. You want to start applying a front brake mildly at some stage. You want to introduce the rear um, brake at some stage. In between, maybe drop a gear down or two. You want to get your seating right, and you want to enter this curb. And as you go through this curve, at some stage you want to start opening up your throttle again, you want to straighten up your bike, and there you go. If all those things you do at the right time once, then I regard you as a very skilled rider. If you still find that you go into, you approach the turn, you slack down, and you actually ex- accelerate the gain because you were too quick on your deceleration. It was too early. Mm-hmm. And you start entering your turn and you lean. And halfway you first straighten up again, otherwise you're going too sharp, you're going to leave the turn. You mm-hmm. didn't estimate the curvature of the turn nicely. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, um, so, and then the other thing is, and maybe t- tomorrow I can at some stage go in front of you guys. You should use your body much more in riding the bike, even on tour. You can on tour do what you need on dirt because one tends to become uh, couch potatoes. You're lazy almost. On this perfect tarmac, so you Mm. just sit there and you ride it like people would ride a cruiser. So I still, if I go into a turn, come forward with my body to weight up my front wheel, go slightly more in an attack position, take that turn. Because the only advantage tar gives you, it's got good traction because of uh, the coefficient of friction. Um, but 
you must choose your style and you must say I don't want to be a, a, a track rider mix occasionally with a dirt bike rider occasionally with a this and another thing uh, you can try and you practice it on top because it's so much easier is to become weightless on your handles yeah, that we've actually yeah, that learned, we've learned yeah. because yeah. of the wind. We, when the wind blows, we become we weight. Le- like on yeah. our handles, we we in a lot of we, wind. We, yeah. we I always tell her, loosen up, loosen up. Loosen let let the up, wind yeah. take you, and and you uh, you just slight correction. Yeah, but let's assume let's assume there's no no wind, and you're on a straight road, and you're in your sitting position. One way of accelerating is to gently tighten your grip. And open your throttle and you just slightly hang onto your arm muscles to stay that position because a few moments later you reach equilibrium you accelerate with the bike and that mm. pull relaxes mm. and then when you brake and you brake slightly harder you, you can tense up your arms slightly. This is down tarmac, no wind. Everything is perfect and a straight road. You can slightly feel, feel how your arms tenses up to resist your body moving forward. It's not traumatic, but you feel those things there. Mm. So you're not weightless. If, however, you sit and you know I'm going to throttle and you lean, but you, you're totally relaxed on your handles and you lean forward whilst you open up mm. you counter the tendency of the acceleration to pull your body back you're doing this this is still totally relaxed and totally relaxed mm. and you pick up speed now you want to change gears split second before you pull in the clutch to go to the next gear you move your body back so that when you pull it in that slight deceleration mm. because you disengage the engine for a moment yeah. and you're going to the next gear when you slightly back you still very less relax on your arms now you let your clutch go and just as you let it go you bring your body mm. forward again and you get throttle again the bike rides away weights will ride we're just about ready to arrive at our destination um, where I will just cut our conversation short there with Koki and uh, we will continue on uh, with more of this conversation on our part three. As you guys can hear, it's ex- he's, um, Koki is a very interesting guy, very knowledgeable and a fantastic talker. He's just a great storyteller and so on. So it's a nice, com- nice company. Um, but we will catch up with that on the third part. Now we're going to actually um, introduce you to the place that we're going to be staying at. Um, I think it's called Ons, Ons uh, Karoeplas in Sivabeksport. It's about you take a turn off to, uh, as you saw earlier to the left, and it's about three, three and a half to four kilometers in. Very, very beautiful place with very interesting people, which I'm going to ex- also explain to you how how their setup works.
your bike when you're standing, I can't fix your bike. Hello. Hi. Nice for us, yeah? You must just tell Spooky we must never been here before, so we didn't really know how the setup works. Is it nice? Eh? Hey? Who is it? When the fridge is in, there must be power on. Look at the fridge. Well, you eat the fridge as much as you want.
actually run by a British lady, which is pa which with a pa with the Afrikaans partner. Um, <laughs> the Afrikaans partner can't really speak English, and she can't speak Afrikaans, but they make a fantastic, adorable couple. It's a well-maintained place with a beautiful pub, um, self-service pub. So it's like an honesty pub where you write down your stuff as you take it uh, uh, take it along and then it's um it's got like caravans that have been um well maintained set up for guests to move in and so on um to spend the evening and it is really really affordable beautiful and comfortable a uh, very very nice day we had yeah and a very enjoyable evening we were actually joined by about another three african twin bi uh, bikers uh, that arrived there so we were about six african twins and one ktm at the venue and everyone bride together and drank together and it was really very very pleasant evening definitely stop here again and we will catch you guys on our s on our third part of the vlog which is uh, on our way now to prince albert which something extremely exciting is going to happen again like uh, not exciting but i'd say extremely weird that's before we take on the swartberg mountains where you guys will be seeing some awesome awesome footage of um, very very skillful riding in very very tough conditions so we'll catch you guys on the third episode thanks for watching <laughs>